What's going on, y'all? Merry Christmas and happy holidays. Today's bank fishing session, sponsored by Mystery Tackle Box, is going to be a ton of fun, y'all. We're going to get out here, try and catch some fish on some different items we have inside of this month's Mystery Tackle Box. I saw some small swim baits, some jerk baits, some bottom baits. I got a few rigs in the car we are about to whip out. There's three ponds at this urban Dallas location I am currently at that we're gonna try and pick apart. I've caught a lot of fish here as well as been skunked. Whether we get on them or we don't catch much, you can learn from a couple of the tips I've got throwing some of these baits. And then also, uh, you can watch me get skunked instead of yourself going out and getting skunked. So let's go ahead, rig some things up and get in the water. I am anxious to see if we can catch anything today. It should be a bunch of fun. What is inside? Check us out. Dude, the jerk bait is like 10 bucks in here. The swim bait, oh, the swim bait. Looks like a $9 swim bait. You guys, by the way, can grab your first box for as low as 10 bucks with code Weston in the description. Check this guy out. I'm actually pretty pumped to fish this one right here. Four and a half inch soft plastic swim bait by Lunker Hunt. It says it's pre-rigged, like it's weedless and ready to go. So I guess I just tie that on and there's a hook in there somewhere. We're gonna find out. We've also got the Zinger. Remember guys, these boxes are catered to your type of species you want to catch and also the time of year. So. They've got a spinner bait in here. Absolute staple in your average fisherman's tackle box. They've got sexy shad, perfect for some stained water or those lakes where the shad are really popping and those bass are feeding on them. We got a couple hammer hooks in this month's box to rig up some soft plastics. Uh, probably like these guys right here, we got some craws. You know what, these are pretty tiny. I might actually put these on a Ned rig, but we've got some Cabin Creek craws. We have got some X-Zone four inch swimmers, it says. Little swim baits, green pumpkin with some blue flake in there. Nice. Also got some micro swim baits, Nika Attack soft swim jig swim baits. These are gonna be epic. I'm gonna put throw these on the spinning rod. A small soft swim bait designed for multi-species. Swim it, crawl it, bounce it. This versatile bait gets bites when all others fail. So we might have to break those out on today's episode. And then of course, a, a winter time, really a year round staple, but we've got a jerk bait in here. You can allow that thing to pause and have those bass come over to it when they're sluggish and slow in these colder water temps. So now you have seen the juice inside of this month's box. Let's go ahead and tie a couple things on. I'm closer and closer to completing my arsenal, by the way, of Guggen rods. Check us out. I got the muscle rod. I'll probably throw that swim bait on there, that bigger soft plastic lunker hunt. I've got the twitch rod, gonna be perfect for that jerk bait, and then I have the finesse rod. You can see I've even got a micro swim bait rigged up on it right now because it's perfect time of year for it. So I'll just slap one of those soft plastics on and we'll get to catching. Let's slap the pliers and the scale in here just in case we need those we have got our box got our rigs all right guys i have chosen my first of these three ponds and this area because lit by the sun these rocks are going to hold some heat the water is cold in december and so maybe the bass are uh, in the warmer area of the pond as well as the fact that the wind is blowing this way kind of pushes some of those bait fish in this direction sometimes those smaller fish something like these small swim baits that i'm going to start with out of the box and so those bass are probably in this area on the prowl and if not at least we eliminated it off the list oops and you know why i'm starting at this location where did that other ned head go oh, there we are okay let's go ahead and rig one of these guys up i already have a ned on my spinning setup so i'll leave these hooks in this bag but it is pretty sick how one comes pre-rigged and then you've got those extras with a second hook just in case you get snagged or lose it i like that take this little guy off here for reference this is a 3.3 inch saucy swimmer and look at that that's like a two and a half inch little swim bait right here we might be getting hit by a bluegill bass anything that swims this is going to fit perfectly on this ned head right here too i'm kind of sizing up the body to the plastic so i know where to exit the bait so it should line up properly oh that's like a match made in heaven right there this is probably an eighth ounce ned rig head right here little finesse hook so i can go with these lighter hook sets this thing should penetrate nice and easy watermelon red flake coloration we're gonna get this thing in the water first and foremost first cast by the way gear on these micro swim baits y'all i've got this finesse rod with that softer tip that way you can get a good fling out of these lighter baits starting off just popping this bait off the bottom y'all moving it nice and slow the gear today is a shimano stratic this is the 2500 size I've got the seven foot finesse Guggen Squad Green Series rod here. Excellent bargain, by the way. Y'all can grab that down in the description. I always have it linked. I think I got 15 pound braid on this guy, and then I've uh, got about a eight pound leader right here. It's just a short fluorocarbon leader, and that's going right to our bait that's getting grass on it. 
because I'm letting it sink down to the bottom there. All right, process of elimination, seeing what these fish want to eat today. I'm going to go ahead and set this aside for the moment. Let's rig up something else in the box and we can kind of go back and forth between different baits as we walk the banks here. I'm thinking I will go ahead and just tie on the spinner bait as well. Oh, that's bigger swim bait. Hmm. Yeah, you know what? I really want to throw this big swim bait. It's windy right now. You know what, let's try and throw the spinner bait first, but I will showcase that big swim bait before sunset. I'm just gonna throw this zinger on the muscle rod. A little heavy for it, uh, for sure, but I don't have my go-to or reaction rods. I would definitely recommend uh, those two rods, I would say over the muscle for something like a spinner bait, but no worries, 7.5 heavy, extra fast. We'll throw the spinner bait on there. By the way, if y'all are new to the channel or just seeing this guy for the first time, this is the new seven inch contender swim bait by the Guggens and uh, we absolutely slayed with this guy the other day. I think I caught like five or six fish on this large swim bait and had a lot of extra followers and uh, side swipes on this guy. Check out that episode as well. It's just the one I think I posted right before this video, but again, if you're new to the channel, we destroyed on that big swim bait. So go ahead and rig up this zinger right quick with a Palomar knot and we'll get to flinging. Okay, y'all, and for the jerk bait, just for today's application, this guy says he dives four and a half to six feet it does float, but when I start popping this thing, he's gonna probably dive straight to the bottom of this place, which is kind of shallow along the banks. So for today's pond hopping excursion, if I was on the kayak or the boat, it'd be different. But I'm gonna go ahead and toss out the Junior Scout, which I already have tied on in its place to showcase a jerk bait because this one does not dive down quite as deep. It's a three to five foot, and if I work it kind of slow, it won't go too nuts and uh, hopefully get snagged a lot less making it a little bit more enjoyable to fish on today's outing. So this Strike Pro guy, maybe I'll be able to fish it in a couple areas of the pond yet, I'm unsure, but we'll start with this guy first. But now we've got a couple more options rigged up. I really want you guys to stick around for this though. I'm quite curious to see exactly how this thing swims. Yeah, I'm pumped. All right, we got everything in the backpack. <laughs> Two rods and all the gear. Let's throw around this zinger for a second. With this breeze here, I'm gonna walk a bit of the bank and see if we can't find something on the run. Slow roll that spinner bait. Let him creep down low. By the way, guys, you can see the displayed weight on this guy, three eighths of an ounce. Sexy shad color, definitely a confidence uh, color for me coming up on some moving baits. And spinner baits, their drawing power comes from these blades. What happens is the sunlight hits that. As this thing is spinning and it's coming through the water, all that flash, it just looks like a school of fish. So when those bass come in to eat, they grab this guy right here, get the hook, and it's very common to throw a swim bait on the back as a trailer. But uh, we're just going straight spinner bait today. Just give you a couple details on this guy right here. Fishing it on 15 pound fluorocarbon, the SLX XT, and again, that uh, muscle rod. But I would prefer something like the, the go-to rod for this specific bait. Oh, there we just spooked something. This 3 8 size is also a little bit better than the half ounce today for me because I wanna be able to fish this thing slow and it won't sink quite as fast and get down to the bottom. The banks here are shallow, so I'm just trying to see where these fish are at and this can help me key in on them and move by them slow enough that they're actually willing to chase it in this cold water. I like to give pointers as I walk. There we go, but this wind is kinda of like coming right at my face. So I'm trying not to like fish and talk too much, but uh, there we go. That was less than 10 casts in with the spinnerbait. I've just been casting at a 45 degree angle as I walk the bank and uh, we have found the moving bite. You know what that means? I bet the jerk bait's gonna work pretty well also. Uh, wow, that was quick elimination from the box and the first catch out of it. Kind of want to throw the jerk bait now just to eliminate more off the list, but at the same time, if these fish are hitting the spinnerbait, there's not too much reason to switch it up. Surely that wasn't the fish we spooked. A lot of times whenever you see some movement off the bank, you ain't gonna catch those. But check it out, man. The spinnerbait coming through right off the bat. Holy cow. Uh, I think I'm gonna give it a couple more tosses before we switch over to the jerkbait. Maybe we can get another fish on it. And he was up shallow too, up shallow. Sometimes in the winter, they're out in those deep pockets of the pond and you really gotta try and find them. Uh, so that was cool. Merry Christmas to us, man. Drop a like for the first catch. Okay, you know what? Despite how easy that was and how many fish we could possibly catch, I do want to showcase some more stuff here. So let's go ahead and switch things up. So just like the jerk bait that is in the box, we are going to throw a jerk bait. Again, this one will just stay a little bit shallower and easier for the ponds. And also because I caught a fish on this just now, this is much closer to the same color versus uh, that greenish one that's more natural that came in the box. So maybe uh, they key in on that color as well today. Now this is going to be on 12 pound fluoro on the Shimano Scorpion DC reel. And I've got it on the Guggen Squad Twitch Rod, which is perfect for your walk and treble hook baits as well as jerk baits. Literally what this guy is all about. So the Twitch Rod is just specifically made for this little movement right here. 
boom, 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 twitch, pop, pop, let these things pause. It's a little bit shorter so that you can get that walk down with your top waters in the summer and you can really have that rod tip close to the water. Same thing with the jerk baits. You wanna have that rod tip pointed down and I'm working it pretty quick right now. I'm just trying to go over a couple tips. You can even see because I was popping it that fast, even though this guy doesn't dive as deep as the one in the box, it's still gonna get some stuff on it. So I'll be working it a little bit slower as we walk the bank but I just wanted to cover the gear real fast. The twitch rod is literally perfect for jerk baits. And the thing about jerk baits is they're a year round bait. So if you guys don't have a rod dedicated for them, this is the one for you. Whether you go with the green series, which has got some uh, foam, black foam in the green Guggen color, or if you go with the gold line, which has got that cork, little higher quality blank and go this route right here, you will be set up for success. But it is now time to break out and fish the jerk bait. So let's go. Yeah, see, even this guy might dive a little too deep, and that spinnerbait might just be a better option for a, uh, a spot like this here. This might be a tough one to secure a catch on. If I keep getting grass, I'm going to have to either go back to that spinnerbait or just break out those swim baits. It's good to pop it with slack line. You want a little bit of slack in there when you pop it. That gives it more of an erratic movement. Kind of looks a little bit more realistic. I got a little bit of grass on there again. So a few more casts with this for sure, but it might just, again, not be the optimal bait for a pond like this. The jerkbait bite is fun though, man, because you'll be like popping it, you let it pause, you've got slack. Sometimes they grab it and come towards you or you don't even know that you have a fish on until you go to smack it a couple more times and there's that weight and you're like, oh God. So the jerkbait bite is actually pretty unique in that aspect. You don't get a whole lot of hits like these. You know what? I'm getting grass every cast. Spinnerbait is definitely a little bit more ideal for this location. But instead of even continuing with the spinnerbait, I think I'm going to showcase that new weedless pre-rigged swim bait because I'm getting this grass and I wonder if it can work right through it and hopefully get some fish that might actually be hanging in and around that grass looking to ambush something like a small fish that the bait replicates. There it is, man. This thing looks pretty sweet. Hopefully it's not uh, gimmicky and performs well because it definitely has the looks. Okay. Okay. So it's got a nice weight. In there what's that what's it say it says it's over a half ounce pretty slick where's this hook there it is i see it okay so the hook is just right there in the top of the body Ooh, nice and hidden kind of like behind this little partial top fin okay because of this almost multi-jointed tail i'm imagining you swim it and it's got a nice little kick but I'm going to also imagine that working it along the bottom, just kind of popping it a little bit and have this tail kind of flutter might look like an injured bait fish and be just as good of a target. So we'll see. We'll see what works best. Bye bye spinnerbait. That might be a bad move, man. The spinnerbait might be the most productive lure before sunset and I'm missing out on a lot of catches. But this guy right here definitely has me curious. And this is some of the reasons why I love Mystery Tackle Box. I've never fished this thing right here before. It's an excellent way to just expand your tackle box, your arsenal. Whether you just try it out for a month or you get like a whole year subscription, which is actually what I did when I first started, or I should say my wife, she got me a year subscription. It was for Christmas one year too, which is kind of ironic, isn't it? I've been on it ever since, man. And if I know how to tie a knot, we'll get this thing in the water, but it seems to be taking me a minute. What I'm feeling, even as I tighten this knot, is that I imagine this thing's gonna get pulled down off of that hook, but I could be entirely wrong. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be presumptuous out here, but I want you guys to get your money's worth, and it looks like this guy right here retails for $8.29, which is pretty much the price you can get this whole box for if you use code Weston, so. That is a screaming deal right there. By the way, there's different tiers on these boxes. I get the pro box. So there's the standard, then there's the pro, and then there's even the elite where you can get more bang for your buck and get some more expensive baits as well to test out. So you got options with MTB. Kind of cool, a little grass on it. Let's get this thing in the water. I'm just gonna do a quick little sweep with the rod. Okay, so I gotta say the tail does not do much, but let me move it a little faster. Okay, yeah, you, you know what? You gotta give it a little speed. Oh yeah, she looks dapper. Oh dude, in the spring and summer, burning this thing, almost like a, a Buka bull shad swim bait. Oh, this will get absolutely crushed. But now the thing is, I also wanna be able to work a soft plastic swim bait like this nice and slow. So let me just kinda, if I just pop it along the bottom, yeah, I guess if you pop it along the bottom, it's got a nice little fall. It's got that weight in the nose. So what's happening is as I pop it up, it kinda like sweeps over to its side but then it ends up falling back down onto the nose, which is good. It's not like the fish's face is just sticking up in the air. So it does look like an injured fish just kind of creeping along the bottom. Okay, so we will definitely be revisiting this bait in the future with a fast swim when the water temps are a little bit warmer. Oh my gosh. I mean, if I could get a hit like that on this right now, I would be thrilled, but I'm thinking I'm gonna need to work this nice and slow through the grass. So I'm probably gonna be varying up my retrieve here a little bit. I'm gonna be kind of working it on the bottom. What I would wanna do with it today is a little slow roll like this and hopefully it would still kick. Oh, it's just so, it, it barely, I don't know if y'all can see it. 
it's so subtle if you move it slow. It's got some body wobble, but okay, so I like this thing a lot. I think it's just gonna perform much better when the fish are chasing actively and you can swim it fast. Even with that pace you just saw me reeling it in right there, the kick isn't all there. You really gotta reel like this fast at that cadence with the seven two to one gear ratio, which is probably pretty standardized. I bet you a lot of y'all's reels are seven two to one or something in that range. Eight to one is getting up there pretty quick. Six to one or in the sixes is a, a little bit lower gear ratio. But basically it means that the spool is making 7.2 full rotations for every turn of the handle and uh, and so on and so forth you know if you've got like the six to one it's making six full rotations if you got the eight to one it's making eight full rotations so you're kind of bringing in more line for every turn of the handle with those high gear ratios so that's a brief rundown on the gear ratios i'm just going to creep this thing for a minute see if we get any hits otherwise i think the spinnerbait's definitely better i think i'm going to switch back over to the ned rigs and try and get another fish or two over here but i will leave you guys with this because this isn't a wintertime mtv box the thing is it will work but i just see it shining a whole lot and like the springtime and as these water temps just warm up a little bit you will absolutely be seeing me get this thing back out 100 percent and if you're going to be throwing some swim baits the winter time is a great time to do it you guys saw us just absolutely crushed the other day on those larger swim baits the thing is some of the bigger bass in these ponds lakes creeks every, everywhere we fish right <laughs> are going to be keying in on bigger targets like this rather than some of those smaller like say ned rigs and just smaller profile baits and the reason is because the water's cold they want to get the most out of every feeding session so what's going to happen is they'll target some big fish that way they don't need to eat as much because they just don't even feel like moving They're uncomfortable think about you when it's freezing cold in your place you go and toss on a hoodie toss on some sweatpants and just chillax right but the winter time is one of the best times to throw big swim baits and actually catch one of the biggest fish out of the pond because they see that meal as being worth it so guys if you've got this in your box i would encourage you to kind of fish it a little slower and see if you can't get that big and but we're going to cut back to the ned rigs and also let's change things up let's go fish another one of these ponds here showcase some different waters what do we got we got another 37 minutes before sunset and we'll probably have a little bit more time to fish after sunset before the GoPro just can't see anything else. How y'all enjoying the bank video? It's been a minute, kind of throwing it back to where we started, right? Nothing but pond fishing for, dude, I feel like it was two years. I don't know if I ever even got on a boat for like the first two years on this channel. Yeah, the kayaks took a long time before I ever took them out. You know, the jerk bait might actually work at one of these next bodies of water as well. That'll be cool. As we make the switch to this other body of water, let us not forget we also have some little craw baits. You know what? That's a tough one. Do I want to switch? I know there's craws here. Yeah, you know what? Forget about it. Let's switch it up. Oh, nice scent. Okay. Whoa. Oh, a little too good. Catching fish since 1984. Sweet. Okay, so this bait, after I take it off of here, is not going to be as good to re-rig. You'll see it's going to get torn up on the nose. See that little rip right there? That's because you've got those hook keepers on these things. That way your bait just doesn't get pulled off with every nibble you get from fish and as you're working it through cover. But... It is not good if you're taking baits off and putting them back on. It jeopardizes the integrity of it. So in the name of education, I am taking that bait off and rigging up this crawl. Any little old fishy should be going after that guy right there. Oh my God. Okay. That looks sick. I think we're on to something with this uh, bait right here. Okay. Load up. Next pond. Just made the move. This pond is looking perfect to fish this thing too. It has uh, less grass right here along the bank and more of like a sandy bottom, which is perfect for this little crawl. Just kind of bouncing along the bottom as well as the fact that we now have an exposed hook instead of a... Uh, weedless setup like that swim bait we were just throwing so you'll definitely be getting caught up in a lot of grass if you're fishing it in it here we go y'all pond number three this one's looking very clear this is nice for a little ned rig they'll be able to see it from further away this might be the one there we go there we go oh no oh man we weren't wrong okay just had a little bass on the hook. That was definitely a little bass, by the way. But uh, that would have been another one on the bank. Wow. Okay, I was just doing little pops because it turns out as good as this pond looks, it also has a lot more grass. So I'm kind of trying not to let it go all the way to the bottom. It's nice because I've got that light jig head for the Ned Rig. And so what's happening is it's not sinking that fast. So it's, it's not like just moving super fast. It's kind of a slow fall, but I still have to keep working it. Otherwise I get caught in this grass. And uh, I almost had the first one out of this pond right here. You know what? Because of this clarity, I wonder if the jerk bait is good. The jerk bait might actually do better here. Let's see if we can close things out with the jerk bait over here. Anytime there's clear water and this jerk bait just sits there, it's begging them to come over and munch. And I believe this one's a little bit deeper as well. Well, it is getting dark, the sun has set. 
and I have yet to find a fish. I'm starting to get a little chilly out here. A few more casts and then we'll wrap up this Christmas special over at the house. Y'all, we are back at the house. Max is enjoying himself some sink water and I would like to thank Mystery Tackle Box for sponsoring today's awesome episode. We did catch some fish and did not get skunked. We almost had two on the bank, which I am more than happy about because I didn't get skunked. That's all there is to it, really, honestly. I caught a fish. But yes, if you guys want to try Mystery Tackle Box for yourselves, check the link down in the description to get it for its cheapest price on your first box. Maybe you're wondering what to do with some Christmas cash you just got this year. Who knows? Grab that subscription. Get it on a month-to-month -month basis. Literally like Christmas every single month at your doorstep with new tackle to add to your box that is catered to the time of year and the species you want to target, guys. So let's get out there, have a bunch of fun, catch some fish, and we look forward to seeing you guys on the next episode. Once again, happy holidays, guys. Peace out. Thank you.